All right, today's lesson, we're going to look at uh, multiplying and dividing radicals. So we looked at adding and subtracting. And remember, with adding and subtracting, they have to have the same radical number. So in this case, we'd go 3 root 2 plus 4 root 2 equals 7 root 2. So that's pretty good. But now with multiplying and dividing, a little bit different rules. So if you look at this example, basically you can see we've got root 2 times root 6, which would be the same thing we already know from before. We can multiply those, get root 12 and then we can actually simplify it down to 2 root 3. So most people find multiplying and dividing a little bit easier than adding subtracting because it makes a little bit more sense. So here we have root 2 times root 3. We know that you can multiply those together to get root 6, so that's definitely true. So on your calculator, if you type in 2 root 5 times negative 4 root 3 and get that decimal answer, then you check negative 8 root 15, you'll see that those are the same. So you can kind of see the negative 4 and the 2 multiplied together gives us negative 8, and then the 5 and 3 multiplied together give us the 15. So this next example, we've got root 2 times cube root of 4, and that's equal to cube root of 8. That's not going to be true. So that one's false because, if you try it on your calculator, it doesn't work, but the reason it doesn't work is we have to have the same root. So if this was cube root of 2, times cube root of 4, that would be equal to cube root of 8. But because that cube root isn't there, it's a square root, we can't do it. So you just leave them separate. And our last one here, you can see we've got both of them are cube roots, so that's good. So 2 times 3 is 6, 10 times 7 is 70, so that one would also be true. So with multiplying, then, our key, key to our rules is we multiply the outside coefficients, so multiply the regular whole numbers, and if there's nothing there, think of it as being a 1, so you can still multiply it. So for this first example, we'd have 5 times negative 2 would be negative 10. Second thing, multiply the roots. So 8 times 12 would be 96. And then just like before, our last step is simplify as much as possible. So in this case, we could change the 96 to 16 and 6. And root 16 is the same thing as just 4. So our final answer should be negative 40 root 6. So you can see in this case I multiplied and then simplified, but it actually works out. If you prefer, you can actually simplify them first if they can simplify. So let's try that for this one. So if we go back to our original, we can change the root 8 into 4 and 2. And we're going to multiply that by 4 and 3 for 12. So the 4 is a 2, so that would be negative 4 root 2 for the first one. Here the 4 is a 2, so that would give us times 10 root 3. So now when we multiply them, we get negative 40 root 6. So you see we get the same answer either case. So the first one, the black one, I followed the steps here. We multiplied, then simplified at the end. And then for the red one, we kind of went the other way around. We simplified first and then multiplied. It really makes no difference which you choose. Um, generally, if the numbers are small, I tend to multiply them first, then simplify. If the numbers are big, where you get really large root numbers, then it's probably better to simplify first. Okay, and our last one here, doesn't matter if we have variables, same rules still apply. So 4 times 3 is 12. x times y would be just root xy. So the harder type of multiplying we get now is when we get brackets and more than one term. But if you think just like regular algebra, if I gave you 3x times x plus 2, you would FOIL that out. You'd go 3x times x, and 3x times 2, and that would be your final answer. So with radicals now, we get the same kind of questions, and we basically do the same steps. So we're going to FOIL them out or expand them out, but we need to just keep track of each radical multiplication as we go. So for the first one, we got root 5 times 2 root 10. Remember, the root 5 has like a 1 in front. So we'd have 1 times 2 would be 2. 5 times 10 is 50. Then when we multiply the second one, we have 1 root 5 times negative 1 root 5. So that'd be minus 1 root 25. Now we can simplify these. Root 50 will break into 25 and 2. Root 25 is just regular 5, so we don't need to break it down. It is a perfect root already. And our last step, root 25 is 5, so this one would give us 10 root 2 minus 5. And that's as far as we can go. We can't combine those because one has a root and the other one doesn't. 
So there's just more multiplying to do, but the steps are still the same. Multiply the roots, multiply the regular numbers, and then simplify. So let's try a couple more that are more foiling. So we have 1 root 5 times 1 root 5 would be root 25. 1 root 5 times root 2 would be root 10. Negative root 2 times root 5 would be negative root 10. And our last one, negative root 2 times positive root 2 would be negative root 4. So you can see the first one, the root 5 times root 5 is root 25, but that also simplifies to a regular 5. So some people just like to do that. Anytime you see a root times itself, basically the square root cancels each other out. So we just get 5. Here we got 10 minus root 10, so that's like 1 minus 1, which is 0. So those cancel. And our root 4 is just a 2. So all of that will actually simplify down to just being 3. We're going to come back to these later when we do harder dividing questions, because this is going to be a strategy we use to, to help us out. Okay, let's try the next one, same way. So we multiply 2 root 7 and 3 root 5. That'll be 6 root 35. 2 root 7 times 2 would be minus 4 root 7. So here we got no root on this one, so we only worry about the 2 and 2 to give us the 4. And the root 7, we can actually think of a whole number being like root 1, because root 1 is 1, so we'd have 7 times 1. Okay, that's one way of thinking about it. And the last one, we get 24 root 5, and we have 8 times negative 2, which would just be regular 16. Okay, so this is one we did all the spoiling. We see there's our answer. We have no like terms. We can't simplify them to make them like terms. So we're done. That's as far as you need to go with that one. There is no further simplifying needed. So we're going to quick, quickly look at dividing now, and you can see basically the rules are the same. So with multiplying, we multiply the numbers and then simplify. With dividing, we just do the opposite. We divide the numbers. So if I gave you a question like 14 root 6, and we divide that by 2 root 3, we basically divide our regular numbers, which would be 7, divide our root numbers, which would be 2. And sometimes they're not always going to divide evenly, which is fine. Like if I gave you 6 root 2 over 18 root 6. We can't divide those out, but we can still think of them as like almost like fractions. So 6 over 18 would be the same thing as 1 third, and 2 divided by 6 is also like 1 third, so we could write it as 1 third root 1 third, or we could even write it as 1 over 3 root 3. There's a couple different ways that we'll simplify this. And we'll get to that more next week when we look at rationalizing. So first rule then, basically, divide the numbers out if you can, even if they're fractions or they don't quite divide, that's still okay. And then our last method that we're going to look at is what happens when the numbers uh, don't, don't divide out at all, or they're, really going to be, they're going to be really bad decimals. So in that case, let me see if I can think of one up here quickly. So if I gave you, um, let's suppose something, so that would be... Um, root 50, and let's try root um, 600. Oh, well, that was actually divide out. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I can't think of one off the top of my head, but let's just assume that this one, these ones didn't divide out. So in this case, the idea then would be let's try simplifying first. So we could actually break the 600 into 106, break the 50 into 25 and 2, so now when we simplify those, we get 10 root 6 over 5 root 2. And those numbers do divide, so we just have 2 root 3 would be our final answer. So it doesn't really matter uh, which one you, you choose, but just kind of depending on the numbers, usually try to divide the numbers first. If that works, great. If they don't, try simplifying first, and usually that'll help. Okay, so let's just do a couple quick examples, and then we're done. So root 30 over root 6, do they divide? Yes. 30 divided by 6 is 5, so divide them out, we're finished. Here we have a cube root. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 21 divided by 3 is 7. So we divide those out, we're done. The next one, you can see the roots divide. 48 divided by 6 is uh, 8. And 15 divided by 5 doesn't really divide, but we can just simplify that as a fraction, so just make it 5 halves. Oh, sorry, not five halves, three halves. So if we divide top and bottom both by five, 
we'd get three halves. So we could leave it like that, but you got to be careful. We still can simplify this one. So we take the root 8, change it into 4 and 2. Root 4 is just a regular 2, so 3 halves times 2 actually is just 3. So that would be our final answer for that one. So always try to simplify if we can. We didn't have to for the first two because the 5 and the 7 already were simplified as far as we can go. And our last one, we've got some letters, but it still works the same. So we have 4 divided by 12, which will be 1 third. And we have AB divided by A, which would just give us root B. So you could write it like that. You could write it as 1 third root B. Or you could even write it as root B divided by 3. Those are all the exact same thing, just depending on however you want to write the fraction. Okay, let's try some where we need to simplify first. If you look at these ones, they don't divide out evenly. But if we simplify them, so 54 would be 9 and 6. And our 8 is 4 and 2. So when we simplify these, the 9 is a 3, 4 is a 2. So we'd get 12 root 6 on the top and 6 root 2 on the bottom. Now we can divide these out to be 2 root 3. So a lot of times the simplifying will definitely help. And let's do the same thing for the next one. So cube root of 162, that'd be the same thing as cube root of, oops, not 81. Uh, what does it work out to? 27. So 27 times, uh, I can't do that one in my head. Let me just grab my calculator. Hold on one sec. So we get 27 and 6 for the top, and then the bottom one, let's use 64 and 2. So cube root of 27 is 3, so we just get 10 times 3, root 6. The bottom we have 20 times 4, root 2. So that gives us 30 over 80, and root 6 over 2. So we can actually divide those out. We can't make the fraction perfect, but we can reduce it to 3 eighths. And 6 divided by 2 is 3. So 3 eighths cube root of 3 would be our final answer for that one. Okay, our last one, we've got a square root again. So root 126. And this one I think we can divide by, uh, let's try 36. Nope. 16 doesn't work, 9 maybe, 9 and 14, so root 9, root 14, and 112 divides into 16 and 7, so not 8, our root 9 is 3, root 16 is 4, so we get 8 times 3 is 24, root 14 on the top and 4 root 7 on the bottom. This one we can divide out nicely. We end up with 6 root 2. And the last question we got is what happens when you get an ugly looking thing like this where we got lots of terms. Remember, if there's only one thing on the bottom, we can still divide it because that would be the same thing as just going 24 over 6 and then 48 over 6. And our last one would be 108 over 6. So we can actually split this up into three separate fractions because we're just doing a common denominator anyway. So now when you do that, we can actually divide out each one separately. So four, 24 divided by 6 is 4. 48 divided by 6 is 8. And 108 divided by 6 is 18. And just like before, simplify them if you can. So root 4 is just a whole number 2. Root 8, break it into 4 and 2. And 18, bring it into 9 and 2. So that would give us 2 root 2 minus 3 root 2 for the last one. And we can put those together to be 2 minus 3 would be negative 1. So 2 minus root 2 would be our final answer for that one. And that's all.